meeting will come to order. First thing on our agenda this evening um, are the approval of the minutes. First set of minutes is from our regular meeting of May 8th. May I have a motion to... Motion uh, to approve the minutes of second. May 8th. Motion is made and seconded to approve the minutes of May 8th. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Minutes are accepted. Second is uh, the minutes of a special meeting on June 5th. I'll move approval. However, I intend on voting against this. I want to table these minutes, but the I'd like a chance to review those minutes. But I'll make the motion to approve. Oh, you're upset with the minutes. No, no, not at all. I just, I just got them. I want to make sure, because that was a long hearing. I just want to make sure that we have time to review them and everything that was well, they, said. Well, they were handed out this evening. Why don't we just table them to the next meeting? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Just to table them to the next meeting. Right. Thank you. Do you need a motion to do that, Ron? Okay. Uh, next item is uh, correspondence. <coughs> Excuse me, we have six items of correspondence this evening. The first is, um, <coughs> excuse me, is a memo of the town plan dated May 6, 2019, regarding an administrative subdivision approval, Samuels Realty LLC involving property at 688. 694, 698, and 710 Aquidneck Avenue, uh, the Polo Center, Plat 114, lots 107, 107B, and 107D. We have a motion to receive this. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That correspondence is accepted. Second correspondence uh, is an email correspondence. <coughs> Excuse me of the Newport City Planner regarding a proposed major subdivision application 435 Broadway, AP 6, lot 11. <coughs> we have a motion to receive this correspondence. So moved. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? I have a question. Uh, was this sent for info purposes, Ron? No, under the, under, well, yeah, it is for information purposes. Under the state statute, the uh, communities are required to notify the abutting communities of major subdivisions, so we do that as well when we have a major subdivision oh, okay. application. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That correspondence is received. The next is uh, an email from Stephen Davis dated June 6, 2019, the subject planning board meeting. You have a motion to receive this correspondence. So moved. Do I have second. a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those nay. That correspondence is received. Next correspondence <coughs> is a letter from Kerry Lewis. Uh, to um, the building inspector dated uh, June 7th. Uh, no subject, but it's related to the uh, Gullison application. We have a motion to receive this correspondence. So moved. Second. second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That correspondence is received. Next correspondence is a memo from uh, Peter Regan, the town solicitor, to uh, the town planner, dated uh, June 10th, 2019. The subject is request for extension of planning board approvals for A308 Chase's Lane, Plat 106, Lot 6A, and 516, and B24 24 Walcott Avenue, Plat 121 NW, Lot 4. We have a motion to receive this correspondence. So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. That correspondence is received. And the last is a, um, a letter from uh, Gregory and Patricia Paquette uh, to the chairman of the planning board dated June 11, 2019. The subject is Goldstein Associates LLC Prospect Avenue subdivision. May I have a motion to receive this letter? So moved. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That correspondence is received. The uh, next item on the agenda are uh, continuances for this evening's meeting. There are two items to be continued. Um, the first is item 4B, a public hearing 
uh, Prospect Avenue subdivision, Eugene Goldstein applicant, request for combined preliminary and final plan approval for a proposed eight lot major subdivision of property fronting on Prospect Avenue. The property is identified as Assessors Plat 121 NW, lot 66A, and is located approximately 0.3 miles to the east of the intersection of Prospect Avenue and Aquidneck Avenue. Is anyone speaking? Uh, yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, David Martland on behalf of uh, Eugene Goldstein. Uh, I uh, sent in a request uh, that this matter be continued to the uh, July agenda. Uh, I'd like to submit uh, a report from uh, a hydrologist relative to uh, the, the impact of the eight lot subdivision on the, the aquifer and wells in, in the area. Um, I would like to get that into the board um, in advance of that meeting so you have opportunity to review and digest that uh, before the meeting and so I'd request that the matter be continued uh, to July 10th. To the next regular meeting on July 10th. So moved. Yeah. Second. Thank you. Motion is made and seconded to continue this to the July 10th meeting. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The uh, item is continued. The second item to be continued is item 5A, the public hearing application of Jack Gullison for development plan review, including requests for waivers from certain design standards of the Middletown rules and regulations regarding the subdivision and development of land section 521 for construction of a new commercial building to include an 18 room hotel with a restaurant and associated site work located on the property identified as 59 Equidneck Avenue, Assessor's Plat 115 SE, Lot 169. Mr. Lynch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I have a scheduling conflict. I'm scheduled to be in front of the Newport City Council in the next half hour, 45 minutes. So I had asked for this matter to be continued to, to the, the January, July, uh, to July 10th July, meeting. Yes, please. So uh, motion's made. Do I have a second? Second. second. Motion's made and second to continue this item to the July 10th meeting. Is there any discussion? Uh, oh. Have we scheduled a uh, site visit or not? <coughs> yes, we have not, no. Should we? We've got time to do it. Why don't, you, why don't you try to uh, pull the members and see if we can get a site visit in before? I was there last July night. Day. I did my site visit. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pizza last night. Any other comments? I just have to let go this thing. So we have a motion to continue this to the July 10th meeting, and Ron will call us to set up a site visit before that meeting date. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Item is continued. Next item is under old business. Item 4A. Applicate, uh, by the way, just uh, to uh, uh, inform the board members, I intend to move item 5E up to right after 4A. So once we deal with 4A, we'll be dealing with 5E. Okay. Uh, item 4A, application, <coughs> Stephen Shelton, Sandra Gowett, and Virginia Trahern Thomas for preliminary plan approval of a two lot minor subdivision of land located at 535 and 527 Tuckerman Avenue. Plat 122, lots 129 and 144. Mr. Silver. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Robert M. Silver from the firm of Silver, Thomas, Martlin, and Offenberg. Uh, I've appeared before this uh, <clears throat> uh, board for a number of uh, appearances uh, in connection with the matter on the old business 4A, the Sheldon and uh, Trahan Thomas. At this point, I've been authorized by uh, my client uh, to request that the matter be withdrawn uh, and not proceed any further. It's been decided that uh, uh, for whatever reasons uh, the applicant has that we are not authorized to go forward. So I would ask for the board to just simply allow us to withdraw our pending application. Thank you. May I have such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded to uh, withdraw this application. Is there any discussion? Well, normally when we withdraw, we withdraw our prejudice, don't we? 
Do we have to I'm do sorry? That? Normally, we would store with the caveat it's, there's no prejudice. Is that correct? Do we have to do that, or does it matter? Oh, I think you have to do it uh, uh, with prejudice because we've had several hearings on this. I think uh, it's required uh, if I ask for without prejudice that nothing has proceeded, but we've proceeded rather significantly. So I asking, don't, I don't mind if you want to with, allow me to withdraw with prejudice. That's fine with me so too. So we should just keep the motion that this be withdrawn. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we ask the solicitors to be safe? Yeah. I I've never heard an applicant ask for a withdrawal with prejudice, but if the applicant is amenable to that, then I would advise that you do that. I'll amend my motion to reflect no. with prejudice. Do I have a second? Second. second. Motion's made and seconded to withdraw this item with prejudice. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. Thank you. Passes. Thank you. The next item is 5E, which we are moving forward in the agenda. <clears throat> Application of Judith Bolt Asher on behalf of the estate of Elizabeth P. Bolt, owner for combined preliminary and final plan approval for a two-lot subdivision of property located at 594 Indian Avenue, Assessors Platt, 129, lot 48. Mr. Lynch. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Jay Lynch from the law firm of Morfolk Adamo Lynch. I'm here on behalf of the applicant this evening. Uh, what we're asking for is for preliminary and final plan approval on a uh, two-lot subdivision. Uh, we are creating two uh, conforming lots. Uh, one lot is the lot that uh, is going to be carved off, uh, contains a, a dwelling unit on it. Uh, it meets all of the uh, zoning criteria, we've got a pro appropriate frontage, square footage, uh, and we have access to a public road. Comments from the planning board? Any comments? No. Just to be sure, we, we're requesting combined preliminary and final that, review. That is combined uh, preliminary and final, yes. I'm oh, sorry, could you repeat? Uh, they're requesting combined preliminary and final yeah, review. Right. <coughs> I'm okay with that. Yes, I see no reason why not. So, I have a motion to, uh, well, let's make the motion and then we'll have a discussion. I'll, I'll move approval based on the memo dated June 3rd from 2019 from the town planner with the condition item one relative to the new lot, new development lot subject to the town's development impact fees ordinance and that it meets the required findings as spelled out in the memo and with, within our rules and regs section 403. Do I have a second? Second. second. Uh, motions made and seconded. Discussion. Michael. So what we're doing is really just, yes, just breaking the lot, just breaking this two parcel up into two, uh, two parcels? That's correct. We have one large lot. We're making uh, two smaller lots. Uh, okay. Both of which meet all the requirements. That's right. Yeah. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion is approved. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good luck in Newport. <laughs> yes. Now we will return to item 4C. Item 4C is a uh, first draft of a proposed Atlantic Beach District overlay zoning uh, draft to become an overlay for the Atlantic Beach District. Uh, as you remember, this uh, came together as a result of the work of two subcommittees, one uh, addressing uh, uses in the Atlantic Beach District and the other addressing uh, design, uh, design issues uh, for the Atlantic Beach District. Uh, the planning department and uh, staff have uh, taken the results of those two efforts and blended them into a, a draft and propose that uh, the board follow the process of setting up a workshop. Let me finish, please, okay? Yeah. Setting up a workshop, um, um, a public workshop, and then uh, we can discuss the draft in detail. Uh, any comments on that? 
So uh, do, you, do you need a motion to, to do that, or can we just request a public workshop be you can set up? Yeah, you can just go ahead and request that I um, pull the board, the board to, for to a find date. a date for the public workshop, and then you know we want to make sure it's far enough out to give uh, at yeah. least a couple of weeks of notice to um, to the neighborhood. And uh, at this point, given where we are with uh, uh, the holiday summertime, at least my vacation's coming up. We're probably looking at the end of July at the earliest. End of July. I've got a question, I guess. I'm trying to figure out, having spent hours on doing the tables, how, how we're going to get all that information into a workshop. I, what's, do you have some thoughts on how to do that? Um, it would, the workshop is basically going to be a presentation of the work that was produced by each of the subcommittees. So you have a use table that was produced by the use tables, table subcommittee that you sat on. And then of course the uh, design requirements. So we'll do our best to give a concise summary of the results of that work um, as at the beginning of the workshop. Uh, the documents will be available to the public in advance of the workshop, and again, I'm, we're going to try to get the word out enough, enough in advance to give folks an opportunity to review those documents. So hopefully at the, at the time of the public workshop, after the brief summary presentation is given, we'll be getting some constructive input from the members of the public, which is really what the purpose of that meeting would be, uh, to help us uh, ensure that we've uh, considered all the issues that, that the board should be considering. So I have a comment. Um, so I, we spent a lot of time at use table subcommittee and uh, I s there's a, an awful lot in there so I'd encourage the people who weren't on the subcommittee to review those use change proposals as noted in red because they, there are some significant changes there and um, so that on that end and then the other, on the other end um, and there were some questions in there that I think we want to be prepared to discuss relative to just the table in general on, on how it applies. So I'll just leave that there for now, but I'd encourage you to, to get that done and, and review it and certainly can email Ron with any questions. And I intend on reading the, the other subcommittee's work as I just kind of scanning it now for the first time um, to see what questions I may have. So. We've spent a lot of time, so we, now's the time to, to, I've, uh, to continue to I've work. read both. I have questions, and I will save them for the workshop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is the process of s requesting Ron to set up a uh, workshop okay with everyone? Yes. The yes. quest is yes. so made. Okay. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is 5B, a public hearing. Application of B&L Hogan Associates, LLC, for waivers from certain commercial development standards of Section 521 of the Middletown Rules and Regulations regarding subdivision and development of land for proposed parking lot modifications on property located at 65 West Main Road, Plat 108SW, Lot 103. Motion up. Thank you. We have a second. second. I have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Public hearing is open. Mr. Silva. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the planning board. Uh, my uh, name for the record is Robert M. Silva. I'm with the law firm of Silva Thomas Motlin and Offenberg, and uh, <coughs> we have been representing B&L Hogan Associates, which is the LLC, a professional LLC uh, for Dr. Brian Hogan's uh, dental uh, practice on West Main Road. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, building was expanded a few years ago. Uh, we received uh, zoning board relief to do so, uh, and we uh, implemented to the best possible way of doing so uh, parking spaces on the existing site. Uh, over the years, uh, Dr. Hogan's practice has developed. We've added associates uh, and uh, the clientele and uh, <clears throat> patients uh, have uh, increased. He find, finds that uh, on occasion, 
the on-site parking is, is not sufficient. Uh, and a lot of times people end up parking across West Main Road and coming to his office and sometimes parking across the street uh, next to him on the east side of West Main Road, but using private property of, of a hotel. So he asked uh, <clears throat> Todd Chaplin, who's here with me tonight, uh, he's a certified uh, public uh, um, uh, an engineer, and he designed a plan uh, to add five spaces five parking spaces, but to do so in an area that if you were to go out there now and look at it, it's part of a, a detention system. It's just a swale uh, with an outlet. Uh, and what uh, Todd has designed, and I'll have him explain it, uh, is he's decided to fill in the detention system uh, by using underground galleys and then spreading gravel uh, over the top of it so that you could actually park cars. Now, in order to do that and add five spaces, there are certain zoning issues that had to be addressed. And uh, on that basis, we filed a petition for variance relief uh, with the Zoning Board of Review. We've already come on to be heard, and the Zoning Board of Review gave us the relief that we needed to allow those five parking spaces to be uh, constructed and installed the way Todd had designed them. Uh, as a matter of uh, the zoning board decision, uh, we got that relief before we got the waivers from uh, the planning board. So the zoning board granted the relief subject to this board uh, reviewing the two waivers. And the waivers are <clears throat> a pretty uh, standard, one of which is when you add five spaces, you're supposed to add another tree uh, under the uh, regulations from the planning board. There is no place for another tree. Nothing's being removed, and the spaces are being located at approximately uh, east of West Main Road uh, and uh, to be used exclusively for help uh, and employees, but not the patrons and the, the, the uh, patients of Dr. Hogan. So uh, if I could, I'd like to have uh, Mr. Uh, Chaplin describe what he's done uh, and uh, you could uh, look at the regulations and we're asking for two simple waivers, one of which is that we don't have to add a tree uh, with those five spaces because there's really no place to put them. And then there were some technical requirements in front of the zoning board where you have to have spaces in between uh, parking a lot spaces, access ways, and you couldn't do that because these five spaces are going to be just adjacent to the McAdam spaces, and they'll be used, as I say, <coughs> by the, uh, uh, the employees. Todd? I believe the plan has been submitted to you, uh, and it uh, is the one that Todd will be using to describe uh, the design. Engineering. Please uh, use the mic, please. Todd Chaplin from Mount Hope Engineering. Um, we did the original design for this project uh, seven or eight years ago. Um, and more recently, Dr. Hogan approached us, and as Mr. Silver explained, had an issue with parking and was hoping there was a way to uh, create five extra parking spaces for employees only there. If I may. Uh, Take your handheld mic, please. <coughs> This is just a blow up of what you have on the screen there. These are six existing parking spaces that are there now. This is West Main Road at the top of the screen, uh, the top of the page. There's currently a small detention basin for the parking that was created seven years ago um, with an overflow line that goes into the drainage system on West Main Road. That's just a small retention basin that's filled with riprap, trap rock, currently. Um, the intent is we're going to square this off for this 50 by 18 area within the basin itself. We're going to put concrete flow diffusers in there that are H20 loading that can be driven on. Uh, those are concrete structures often used in septic system designs and they're often used for stormwater, uh, subsurface stormwater disposal. So we'll 
basically just take the trap rock out of there, lay the concrete flow diffusers in there. We'll fill the voids with stone again to, so there won't be any voids, essentially. And then it'll be dressed off with pea stone, or we've also discussed maybe using um, square pavers or something like that. But it still will allow the water to pass through into the basin. So the basin will continue to function exactly as it is today. Storm water that comes off the parking lot will continue to flow into it as it does today. We're not creating any new impervious surface uh, in that regard. And these five spaces will just be landlocked essentially by the uh, customers at the, at the dental office. Uh, How are those spaces uh, um, approached? How how do they get in? Now? <clears throat> the five spaces that you're proposing, how will cars get to them? Well, there's currently the access off of West Main Road here. Can you go back to the bigger page? Sure. Because it's, my eyes are bad enough as it is. Well, okay. the bigger page. Yeah, I can. Okay, this, this is yeah. West Main, this is coming in off West Main Road currently. This is coming in off of uh, Dudley Place. And these spaces will be accessed the exact same way. The intent is that the employees are going to be there. They're going to be there first. They're going to park there. And then customers will park and essentially box them in oh, okay. while they're there. That's, that's what I... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, they, they won't be able to get there from yeah. directly from yeah. Westmere Road. And if they, they, they need to go out for lunch, they're going to have to wait till the customer leaves. Um, but um, it's, it's employee-only parking spaces. Yeah, Dr. Hogan is prepared to orchestrate and regulate the use of those five spaces, which would be for employees only. They'll get there early, they'll uh, line up, and they'll presumably be there after the last patient is. First is in, good. last out, right? Yeah. First in, last out, yes. Is there enough turn radius to get into those parking spaces? Are they, are they assigned to employees, or are they just... Uh, I believe the intent is to, to post a small sign that says, employee only parking in these five spaces and I believe at the time that customers show up those spaces will already be occupied so uh, a patient's not going to be able to get there first necessarily and park there and then get themselves boxed in that's the intent there but they'll, they'll be accessed the same way just as if you're parking in this space they'll just continue and, and park into that space As I said, the zoning board has looked at this and there was some technical relief that was required and the relief was granted, but there were two waivers that had not been addressed by the planning board, so we went ahead with the zoning board hearing so as not to lose another month and the zoning board granted us the relief from a zoning perspective but said the relief becomes final after the planning board grants the waivers and, and the two waivers um, uh, inherent to the, the site itself. One is that you are required 10 feet uh, of a landscape buffer along West Main Road, uh, and that's not provided, but whatever is there is going to stay there as far as a buffer goes. And the other one was required parking lot trees are not provided. Other questions? I have another question. When, when you put the concrete supports into that uh, retention basis, that takes up some volume. So how does that affect the retention base and volume? Right. I, I think I'd actually argue that we may be creating more volume. I mean, the, the concrete flow, concrete flow diffusers are four by eight by a foot thick, and they're essentially a hollow structure. So you have 32 cubic feet of hollow space beneath each one of these. And like I said, they're four by eight. So we're, uh, we're putting two Two to, each, two to each 
So you're saying the retention volume is actually so increased by doing this? Volume, I, I thought actually run calculations on it, but I think intuitively I would say that there's actually more volume there, and we're not we're not decreasing the footprint of this area in any way. So the depth the depth will remain the same. The outlet <coughs> structure here is going to be continued to be utilized, which is an overflow. So this is intended as a retention basin that holds some water, but it, in, a, in a larger storm event, and this was all calced out seven eight years ago. Um, in a larger event, this overflows into the state drain system on West Main Road. Now, if if you cover that as you plan, what does that say about maintaining that retention basin and the outflow from it? Um, there'll still be, we'll, you can create some access to the catch basin at the top of this that'll allow this to be accessed for, for cleaning purposes if they needed to. Okay. So, that brings up another a good question, Paul. So, what is the, what is the drainage status now? Is there an awful lot of, uh, not, we're not engineers, obviously, Todd. Well, I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> Except for my friend here, Paul. I mean, <laughs> apologize. It's okay. I digress. He's off duty right now. <laughs> He's off duty. I just, I just want to make sure that, uh, like Paul said, um, you say it. Um, any, any, would you entertain a condition to, to run it by the town engineer? So let me, let me jump in here. So you are not being asked to review the site plan? That's correct. Yeah. So just to, to remind oh, just the you waivers. that We're this is strictly a request yeah. for waivers from the design requirements, yeah. the two yes. landscaping design requirements. Yeah. Uh, this project, the, the revision to the, to the site plan does not trigger a full development plan review. Yeah. That being said, before permitting, the review of the stormwater um, soil erosion sentiment control plan is completed by the building official and, and the town engineer. Okay. Um, I, I'm, not, further. I'm not there on a daily basis and haven't seen any storms. I'm not aware that there's been any problems since it was installed seven or eight years ago. I don't know if you'd like Dr. Hogan to maybe give you his opinion on what he's seen in rainstorms out there. I'm sure it's fine. I'm okay with it. If you, if you I'd want. like to ask Dr. Okay. Hogan. I'm okay too. with it. Thank you, though. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. I, yes. I had it marked on here and neglected to just looking right at it myself. So. We are we are just <laughs> looking at the waiver request. Okay. DJ. So we don't need to even ask whether or not the tree commission would be interested in this. Well, I heard that, one about of the the waivers affects the trees, so I think we yeah. we could. Well, we don't have a landscaping plan, a formal landscaping plan, so nothing's been forwarded to the tree commission. But there is no landscaping being planned, so I guess no. there's yeah. nothing to review. There's no grass in there. Are, are there trees now? Doesn't the plan show trees already? No, yes. It does show trees. Yeah, there are existing trees. None yeah. of them will be affected no, by so this. There's existing trees that are there that are going to need to be trimmed back a little bit, and this grass area will still remain seven and a half feet between the existing stormwater. That, that distance between this existing stormwater structure and the property line, the stone wall that runs along the sidewalk uh, of West Main Road, I mean, that, this grassy area will essentially continue to be there as it is today. Yeah. Some of these trees are pretty, pretty thick, may need to get just trimmed back a little bit, uh, especially during the construction, so that they're not right up against a car. This, this tree right on the corner does come out into this parking space. Is, okay. is the uh, surface of the parking lot just uh, partially uh, covered with uh, gravel, or is it just uh, you know the whole thing? This parking lot is all the, main, the parking lot that's there today is paved, and, and that's gonna. How is that affected by this park? That's not being changed at all. So it's just that swale in the front, you know, that so detention area that's being filled in. Correct. And that, that's where the gravel is going to be. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments? Other comments? May I have a motion for a favorable recommendation? Public hearing. Uh, may I have a motion to close? Oh, I'm sorry. Are there any public, members of the public who wish to speak? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion is made and seconded to close the public hearing. Any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Public hearing is closed. May I have a motion for a favorable recommendation? And since if I could just jump in again, since the zoning board has already acted on this application, it would be uh, a motion to grant the Wait. requested waivers. Yeah. 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 
A motion to grant the waivers. A motion to grant the request of waivers. Second. second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Mr. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is item 5C. A request of Robert M. Silva, Esquire, on behalf of Second Street Constru uh, Construction, LLC, for extension of the final plan approval for minor conservation development and consideration of revised landscaping plan for property at 308 Chases Lane, Plat 106, Lot 6A and 516. Final plan approval granted July 11, 2018. I want to bring the uh, attention of the board members to the memorandum from the town solicitor <coughs> that was received at the beginning of this meeting, which relates to this item as well as item 5D. Mr. Silva. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, uh, Robert M. Silva from the law firm of Silva, Thomas, Motlin, and Offenberg. Uh, I'm uh, here before you representing uh, Matthew Zalumis doing business as the uh, Second Street LLC. Uh, this is a matter that has been before the planning board uh, for quite some time. It went through a preliminary plan approval, which was appealed to the zoning board uh, by the neighborhood and returned back uh, to the planning board because the appeal was denied. And then we presented a final plan to the planning board, which the planning board approved. As a part of that, we uh, went to the uh, tree commission and we got a landscaping plan approved, which included a large area to the west, which is the so-called open space under a conservation uh, subdivision. Uh, that plan was a part of the approval uh, as well uh, and remains in place as of today. Uh, it came to um, the zoning officer's attention and the planning officer that uh, Quite some time had passed since the uh, final approval was granted, and I believe that was granted sometime in uh, uh, July of 2018. Uh, Mr. Zulumis ultimately chose to go forward with this project, and uh, he got a permit to de demolish the existing uh, dilapidated structure that for years had been used as a two-family boarding house. Uh, when that was done, the contractor that cleared the site inadvertently wasn't aware of the form of the landscaping plan, which identified some trees to be saved. Those trees were taken down. Uh, I was made aware of that. I made Mr. Zulumis aware of that. And he immediately <clears throat> engaged the services of Pamela Rogers, who's a landscape architect and she's here with me tonight. And she went in, took a site visit, saw what was removed, compared it to the original uh, 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 landscaping plan, and she designed a revision and an upgrade of the landscaping plan, which is now before the board, uh, and it includes significantly more landscaping than was there, and with the, also the intent to replace those trees that were taken down by smaller versions, not the same caliber, but overall the plan is a lot more comprehensive from a landscaping perspective than the one before. Uh, Pamela and I appeared uh, before the planning, uh, I mean the tree commission before the planning board, and we presented the plan and identified what it was all about, uh, and the planning, uh, the tree commission uh, decided to send a positive recommendation to the planning board that it preferred <coughs> the revised plan to the other plan. So if I could, I'd ask uh, Pamela to join me and answer any questions on the plan that the board might have. But what we're asking is for the planning board to modify the final approval so as to include and require the revised plan to be the one that will be uh, looked at uh, and uh, observed. I, I, I also wish to point out before we do this that the extension is no longer needed. It yeah. Well, there's an opinion from the solicitor, yes. I believe, saying yes. that the period within which the mylar had to be filed, which was 90 days from the July meeting of 2018, that's expired. 
my position was it hasn't been expired because it wasn't allowed to start. There were two or three other conditions that had to be met first before my law could be recorded, and that was Director of Public Works had to review things with sewer and whatnot. Uh, the town's engineer had to look at the calculations for drainage runoff and whatnot. And al although I never pressed the issue, apparently no formal report had been made back to the town. So on that uh, basis and under those facts, the solicitor felt that the original final approval, though it was conditional, uh, is still in existence and we can file a mylar after all those requirements are met. And I believe the requirements have been met. So as I stand before you, I don't think uh, the solicitor's opinion interferes with what we want to do tonight. It simply says no, it, but the, it's still there. The request was for the extension, but that is no yeah, longer needed. Over. So all we have to do tonight is address the landscaping plan. That's correct. So, Mr. Chairman, yeah, the, the board should make a motion and vote to have that request withdrawn, the request for the extension? <clears throat> Since it's on the agenda. Do we make? Well, I would think. I'll well, make, I'll make the motion. I'll that. make that motion. Uh, hang on, hang on, on a a hang on a minute. On a the council should request the yeah. withdrawal yeah, of the extension I, request, the and then you can vote yeah, on okay. it. Yeah. That's my request yeah. that my letter requesting uh, an extension be withdrawn because it, I feel it's unnecessary. Okay, so I have a motion to uh, withdraw the request for extension. So moved. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. The, the world's not going to end because of this mess but it is a little bit sloppy. Now, who's watching the farm here? There was a plan. Uh, it was executed improperly. Is the applicant's problem that he didn't supervise the destruction of the house so and everything we're else? Get, we're getting to the next step. So what you're, what, what's the motion on the table now is to Let's withdraw see, the yeah. request for the extension okay. of the and approval, yeah. and then you're going to talk about the landscaping plan. Okay. okay. Thanks. Okay. Any discussion on the motion to uh, withdraw the extension? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That motion passes. Mm -hmm. Now we're dealing with the landscape plan. Yes. Uh, and I have Miss Rogers here, Pamela here, to explain what the difference is, uh, if you want. Pretty extensive change. Uh, does anyone want a presentation, or do you just wish no, to address I, questions? I have a okay. Uh, I do have the comment made by the Tree Commission. I just read it to you. The new plan consists of planting 35 trees versus 16 in the original plan. In addition, 26 junipers are shown versus the original number of 14. After much discussion of the fact that there is not an ordinance with teeth in it to discourage such departure from approvals, the plan was reluctantly approved, so it was approved by the Tree Commission. Yes. We had, we it's a better plan. Yes. Yeah. And she did a wonderful job. Thank you. Uh, other comments? I have a question. Uh, on, on the landscape plan, on that area that borders the Naval Access Road, uh, there, there, there's some sort of a structure back there. You know, there's a long rectangle along the, um, I guess you want to say, the west side border. Yeah. It's a rain garden. A rain garden? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Or by retention. It was there from the beginning. That was, yeah. That's not there. That's not there. Yeah. Okay. That's, that was there. I don't see it, but that doesn't show the landscaping. Yeah, that's right. In um, partial response to Art's concern, is it possible that we can have the tree warden uh, monitor the installation of all landscaping activity? as well as the maintenance of that landscaping after it is installed. I'd like to ask that question of the planner and the town solicitor, please. I think that could be a condition of the approval of the revised landscaping plan. Okay. Do you think the tree commission would go along with that? I think they would, but I do think there should be a monetary thing a, a, a with it for the tree warden because he does have an awful lot to do with the valley. He has really created that and he knows every tree there and he takes care of every tree so he's very very busy is, is that a different issue or is, um, is that separate that's separate I, I don't know how the tree warden is compensated I can't answer I don't that. think he is but maybe he is I don't 
Well, for, the, for, the, for this issue, can we make the, uh, can, can we apply the condition that the tree warden monitor the landscape plan installation and, uh, and maintenance after installed? So I, I, I support that, but I would also add, if he's compensated in any way, whatever the cost is to monitor it, if the applicant would agree to, to well, I, I think like there's to, more. Like to to, I think there's more to that issue than just this project. I so. need to ask the question: To what end is the monitoring? What is that? What is why the request for the monitoring? I just I'm well, not understanding. Well, uh, as, as we've seen in this case, um, the uh, original landscaping plan was not adhered to for whatever reason. There have also been a number of cases where the maintenance of installed landscaping has not been done properly, at least after the first year. There's a a commitment of one year, and, and then they just let it go. And it, does, it, it just looks terrible. And so I'm looking for a mm -hmm. way to um, um, have some oversight on the installation as well as the maintenance to make sure that what is intended happens. Uh, Paul, may I make a comment? John, go ahead. I don't necessarily disagree with you, but can we cap it on a time limit? Is he supposed to go back there every 10 years and make sure it's you know, well, I don't know. every I'd year and monitor it? Or? I'd like to hear something from I the, think the tree the warden and the town commission, uh, the I, tree I commission. I can't speak for the, um, for the tree commission, but this seems more like a keeping of a condition of having a maintenance plan as we do for other but conditions. But maintenance plans are put in place. They usually specify a one-year uh, monitoring, and then nobody's tracking it anymore. So the, the frustration is, is there was an approved plan and it wasn't followed, and here we are now after the fact trying to make well something. Now, let me finish, okay, because I did attend a tree commission meeting and I spoke with the tree warden, and the tree commission and the warden are very concerned about this. So I think if there was some communication with the tree <coughs> commission and the tree warden, <coughs> some arrangement could be reached. <coughs> now, whether there's a time limit on it, certainly should be more than one year. Anyone who's done any gardening knows it takes more than a year for plants to get established. So it's got to be more than one year. Well, what so happens now? What's the policy now? What, what happens now on, on landscaping plan plans? Approvals? They, the landscaping plan has to be um, implemented. The building official does not issue a certificate of occupancy until the plan is implemented. Because the landscaping plan is part of the town approvals, that landscaping is essentially protected through through the approvals of the town going forward. That doesn't mean that it's being monitored. That and I think that's Paul's concern is right. that if it's not being monitored, who's who's going to enforce if the landscaping right. is is not maintained? I understand that, but so if if we didn't if this didn't come to light at some point. There's an approval of this final landscape plan, of the plan that was originally approved, and now if we modify it, they'll have to approve that as well. What's the standard procedure for that? Maybe you can explain. Well, there is, I guess there isn't there one. Is, there isn't a procedure for ongoing monitoring. If, yeah, there isn't one. Yeah. That's what I mean. So we start a precedent that's now. That's, that, that's my concern. Yeah. Right. yeah. So you start if, a if set precedents on this item. Hold on Interject for a moment on, Hold on, one on the monitoring. Hold on one second. I, I want to hear the comments from the board, please. I mean, do we, do we set a precedent with this particular case that now carries through to every development that it has to be monitored yeah. one, two, yeah. three, four, five years? Well, well, nothing's been properly been monitored for 50 years. It, it, it would have that effect. So, I so think now we it, create another bureaucracy. Well, no, I think we have, to, we, have to ad trees. we have to address it and see if it's workable. Okay. You know. It's not that the landscape Martin, you had a comment. I, I, I just wanted to respond to, to Mr. Nash's comment about whether, uh, was there another procedure. And I think Mr. Wolanski was, was indicating that at the time of the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, the building official comes out looks at things. and looks to see if it was implemented in accordance with the approved plans. Now and sometimes he will, often, he will oftentimes seek input from the tree commission as well mm -hmm. at that yeah. point. That's correct. Yeah. And oftentimes, because of the timing of the year, landscaping may not already be in. At which point, 
an applicant is required to post a bond to make sure that the landscaping is done in accordance with the plan. So there is a process in place to make sure that it is followed or that any errors are, are picked up to make sure that that is implemented in connection with the certificate of occupancy. Um, so theoretically, this plan could have gone, we couldn't be here tonight doing this, and the, the plan, they go for your approvals, final approvals, and they see that the plan is not consistent with what was originally approved, so then we, we'd have to go through the exercise of getting it corrected, but there's at least something in place at the approval time, like you said. That doesn't address Paul's concern of the, of the on, maintenance. The ongoing yeah. And I understand that, and I'd like to do that in this case. I'm supporting something like that, mm -hmm. but that's, there is a process in place, and it, yeah. I mean, well, the process uh, it doesn't always work, and there are cases yeah. where it has not worked. I don't know why. Is there a bond? Posted for this? Not yet, no. Let me, let me just make a clarification, which I think in this case, which is a unique situation, uh, is very important. It's not that the landscaping plan was never done properly. It's, I'm here simply because a contractor, without knowledge, took down existing trees. This plan, was not implemented because the issue was raised, what are we gonna do with the trees that are, not all, uh, are no longer there and haven't been maintained? Our answer was, we'll not only replace what was taken down per the first plan, but we'll have our landscaping architect embellish it significantly so you end up as a town with a much better yeah. landscaping plan. Yeah. But the, the, the owner and developer never did not carry out the landscaping plan. He never had a chance to do that. And we're asking simply that this plan be approved and David very <coughs> correctly stated that there is a process for enforcement but that ends up being with the zoning officer and no certificate of occupancy and whatnot will be granted until the basic plan has been planted, if you will. Now, the chairman's concern, what happens after that? My response is there is nothing in place today for yeah, that. And, and, and I, and I think it's to, somewhat uh, unfair. I think you're right, there should be something. Yeah. But I think it's somewhat unfair that in connection with this applicant who did not fail to put in the landscaping let me, plan. Let me speak and I'll agree time. with you, okay? okay? I do not want to hold this project up. Yeah. So what I would like to do is, can I make a, a, a separate request that, that um, the, the installation and maintenance of landscaping uh, be re-examined with, uh, with possible, possible oversight by the tree warden? For, for future and, projects. And make, and make that as a separate <coughs> separate request, independent of this project. I don't, I don't want to watch. Yeah. I so. think that's something we can look at through either amendments to the to subdivision and development regulations or perhaps zoning. One way or the other. We One can, way we, or the yeah. other. Yeah, we'd have to find out what the scope of the tree warden's job is. Yeah, at the moment, I don't think there's any ordinance that allows us to impose a maintenance plan on how big or tall a tree is allowed to grow. So, so this the landscaping plan. It's, it's not so, it's not so much how... I, I, that was inartful, I agree, but in terms of the maintenance of the landscaping, yeah. there's nothing in the ordinance that says it must be so. So we can, we can make this a separate request to look into this? Yeah. When does, I agree with that, yeah. when does a bond kick in? Uh, only, uh, according to what Mr. Martlin said, only if when the building official makes his site visit and there appears to be a discrepancy, then the, the, the developer is required to post a bond to ensure that when planting can be completed, it is done. Is that correct? Yes, that's, that has been my experience and that had on a couple of projects where bonds have had to be, be submitted uh, to, to assure that the landscaping would be, would be completed. Um, there are some different bonding requirements, obviously, with the uh, planning regs. If, um, right. Uh, well, yeah, I think it has to get worked out at, at, the, in, at the level of the building inspector who is charged with making sure that the plan is in compliance, much like the house, the, the site work. Um, yeah, I, I think 
But I, I, I think we should look I, at it. I'd like to re-examine that process. So yeah. that's what I'd yeah. like to look at. BJ. I, yes, I have a comment. I don't know how many people on the board here remember Toyota coming before the board, and they wanted to uh, change their facade. And part of our agreement was that for landscaping, that the between the stone wall and the road, they would have planting uh, plantings that would uh, complement that area because they did have some. But it seems to have gone down the drain because I complained about this maybe three or four years ago, and nothing nothing happened about it. And they are supposed to be having some kind of very nice landscaping in front there. But that's just an example of what can happen. Mm -hmm. well, we can't re make that the assumption to the, new, to, the per to the people in front of us right now. No, no, no. It's just independent. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So any other comments mm -hmm. on this application, either for Mr. Silva or the landscape architect? Yeah, well, yeah. I say again, who's watching the store? You've got a plan that says you're not cutting down trees. It's not very hard to understand that. So who was supervising the project to make sure the trees didn't get cut down? I mean, Mr. Zalumis was not there when his contractor cleared the site. The major portion of the effort to clear was the demolition and yeah. removal of the house. I've been watching that because I go by. Yeah. I go through that gate all the time. And so the I contractor just, just yeah. took it upon himself to clear the site completely, get it ready for building. And when he did that, he took trees that were supposed to be retained. If I could just also address, it's not, it, it hasn't been clear cut. And there were a number of trees on the approved plan that were coming down mm. to, that were located in where some areas of, of yeah. the drainage swales were. So there are still existing trees maintained on that site. There were, however, um, five or six trees that should have remained. Uh, but there, there were, uh, are probably eight other trees that are there. But, in, and, and they're mostly located on the, the, um, the southerly property line. If I could just approach this board. This one, I think this one would be better, but bring the mic, microphone the with you, please. <laughs> so, th these trees, that are located in the front of the site still remain. There were trees that were going to be existing trees in this area that were removed, that were supposed to be removed, because this is part of the detention base. Right. Those came down. Those were supposed to come down. There was a tree located a little bit further to the north that was removed that shouldn't have been. Uh, it was close to where the, the, the driveway was. But there are other existing trees that still remain. Um, however, uh, there's a tree here, that, there's two trees here that, that came down. That's where a lot of that additional planting will remain. But I mean, the, to, to say it was clear cut and everything came down is, is not accurate. There were trees that were absolutely maintained that were supposed to be maintained. Thank you. Uh, other, other comments? <coughs> Who, who marks the trees? Sometimes I see construction sites and I see these yellow ribbons tied around. Right. You know, and those are the ones that we removed. Or I don't think there was any marking done. Yeah. And I'm not offering this as an excuse, but only as a pot potential explanation. I think the trees that were there and taken down, in the contractor's opinion, were damaged. Uh, weren't, weren't really good types of trees to save, and he took it upon himself to remove them, which he should have reviewed the uh, the landscape plan. I'm not too, too sure he was aware that there was a landscape plan. Uh, other comments? No. Nope. Okay. But you end up with a much enhanced landscape plan. All right. May I have Agreed. a motion? Agreed. Agreed. May I have a motion to approve the uh, revised landscaping plan so for this application? Second. Who moved it? Did you? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passed. Thank you very much. And, uh,
you'll deal with the request to re-examine this process. Very good. Thank you. The next item is uh, item 5D, a request of David P. Martland, Esquire, on behalf of Jerry Kirby for extension of the final plan approval for a minor subdivision of property at 24 Walcott Avenue, Plat 121 NW, Lot 4. Final plan approval granted January 9, 2019. Uh, yes, good, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, in light of the memo received by uh, Mr. Regan, I would re request that that matter be withdrawn. We have a motion to withdraw that request. Motion made. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Thank you. It's approved. We need to find you. Next item is um, item 5F, uh, discussion of the process to update the Middletown Hazard Mitigation Plan. And I'll turn this over to town planner. So you, you don't have anything in your packet on this. Um, I just put it on the agenda to give you an update and to, and to request that you schedule a, a public workshop. Um, the town has a hazard mitigation plan that was adopted, uh, I believe it's five years ago and we're required to update it every five years. The, uh, the legwork, a lot of legwork was done by Kevin Proft before he left to uh, work with town staff to produce a revised draft of the hazard mitigation plan. Uh, it's in pretty good shape. Rita, Rita did a little bit of work on it um, as well to clean it up uh, when she got back, and I think it's in a good uh, condition now to uh, host a public workshop. Uh, the planning board uh, is typically the body that would host this public workshop, um, and, and the board is certainly welcome to uh, participate in the in the review and discussion and make recommendations regarding the hazard mitigation plan. Uh, the idea would be to present the draft uh, during that public workshop, uh, accept public input. It's going to be advertised and whatnot. Um, we would invite all of the appropriate officials, uh, local and some state officials as determined uh, or recommended by the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency. Uh, there's a whole protocol to go through uh, to get these plans adopted. Uh, the first uh, review is done by Rhode Island EMA uh, and then they forward it on to FEMA uh, who must finally approve the plan. Following approval by those two agencies, the plan comes back uh, to the town for adoption by the town council. So it, this won't go to the town council until it's gone through the reviews in the event that as a result of those reviews by the agencies that revisions need to be made to the plan. So we wait until the end uh, to ask for the town council's uh, approval and adoption. Um, so again, your role is to host the public workshop meeting. Um, so I would request uh, that you ask me to uh, schedule that <laughs> workshop. Um, and, and obviously before that, uh, we'll give you copies of the draft and you'll, you'll all have an opportunity to review it before that workshop. So I assume everyone on the planning board is okay with that request, so, so request it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item is item six, the updates, and in your package was um, the memo that Ron uh, usually prepares with these updates. Does anyone have any comments or questions? I have a couple. Okay. Um, I want to point out uh, item number three, consider modifications to the zoning ordinance regarding mixed use development. Include review of uses, business, business hours, and other restrictions. This item was presented to the planning board on March 13th, at which point it was referenced to the use table subcommittee for consideration following completion of the ABD overlay district. So assuming, yeah. <laughs> assuming no work is complete for the Atlantic Beach District, I would request that your subcommittee pick this up. Sure. Okay. Um, also, um, on item eight, uh, this is the one where uh, we're waiting for the finance department to include overhead costs. It, it, this has been on here for quite a while. Um, can we get uh, 
some action or at least some feedback why there has been no action? I can ask, sure. Thank you. Uh, also, number 15, um, the uh, draft overlay for airport zoning. This is, um, this was a, a request from the town council related to the comprehensive community plan that a subcommittee of the planning board be established to work on this item. The staff has developed a draft with input and so all that, uh, all that is needed now is for a subcommittee to work with the planner on this draft. So I would like to uh, form a subcommittee to do this. Is there anyone interested? Item 15, the uh, airport zoning. Yep. So, BJ is interested. Anyone else interested? Michael? Joe? So, who would like to chair this? Joe, will you chair it? Sure. Okay, so Joe Pyrrhic will chair this subcommittee. Uh, Michael and BJ are members, and um, Joe, I would ask that you coordinate with Ron to get the subcommittee going. Thank you. I, I've got a couple of them here, too, if I could ask. All right, why don't, you go, why don't you go ahead, because I still have another one. Okay. So go ahead. Number nine, uh, one of the things that happened in the Chase's Lane uh, project was it wasn't considered a major subdivision, as I recall, and about as one right. of Notified, and I thought if I, I just was thinking to myself, and I had something like that happen in my neighborhood, I think it'd be reasonable to get notification. So we're still working on that. But the one that concerns me the most is number 13. You know, we've been talking about oh, yeah, the default to the conservation subdivision or the regular subdivision, and what's taking so long to get that into the council? I mean, that's six months ago. The recommendation and the amendments were forwarded to the town council, and the last I heard that the solicitor and the town clerk were working to get the advertising um, straight to, to get that onto the town council docket. I don't know if Chris has any, any update on that, but... Um, I mean, it, I'm not a nag, but it seems to be a long time. I think it's important that that... Everything's important, I guess, but it would be good to settle that thing out once and for all. If you could get some feedback. I'll on check that, in that with the town clerk tomorrow okay. morning and see, yeah. see where she is. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, the one other item that I have, uh, actually, um, I, I don't even know if it's on here. I sh should have checked. Yes, it's number 14, which deals with marijuana production. Uh, we have been uh, requested by the town solicitor to put a subcommittee together to review a draft of the marijuana ordinance. I'll, I'm in. I'll be the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants it on this one. So, so uh, is, is, is you're already a chair of a subcommittee. I'm just kidding. Okay. Is there anyone interested in serving on this subcommittee? I am. I'll serve on it, Paul, but I don't, I, I I don't want to. to chair. And John. Okay. John, will you chair it? Okay. All right. So John will chair the marijuana subcommittee, and uh, Bill Nash and myself are members of that subcommittee. I'd yeah. like to uh, provide you with a brief update from the solicitor um, sure. that um, he has managed to locate a consultant who yes. will be um, working to help draft this ordinance once it's ready to be drafted, um, and he's just going to request that you propose it convening a subcommittee, but you've already taken care of that. But so, Yeah, my understanding is that there is a draft, but he's now engaged a consultant to look over that draft. Correct. So that the subcommittee can then get going. Yeah. So yes. I would uh, request John to coordinate with the planner to get the subcommittee going. You guys are after the free samples. I yeah, know. right. I, see it <laughs> I mean, let me, ask, may I ask a question? Sure, Does of it course. make a difference what your opinion is on marijuana? Nope. Uh, not in the subcommittee meeting outside of course it does. <laughs> I mean, I have a very strong opinion about it. I don't want it to influence. Well, it, you shouldn't let it influence your work on this, that's all. Yeah. You have to be objective right. on yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely correct. Pardon me? Absolutely correct. You have to, you have to Thank you. change hats. <laughs> okay. It's a good test, John, but I don't know which way you're leaning, which is how you feel, and I don't care to know. I just care that we're going to do some good Right. Of the ordinance, so I appreciate I'll tell you my opinion. I'm adamantly opposed to it. Yeah, okay. That doesn't mean anything. I'll yeah. be fair. 
Which way? Uh, we Which have way? a subcommittee. I'm sure you will be objective. Absolutely. Though. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, these other any any changes on BRAC? Uh, nothing relative to the uh, accessing of the property on the shoreline. We're still waiting for the remediation to be completed, uh, and this is the Green Lane uh, proposed park property uh, that, that that will allow for the transfer of that land to the town and development of the park there. Um, one quick update on the land that has been transferred the corner of, of Coddington and West Main. Um, I've been asked by the town administrator to begin work towards uh, issuing a request for interest and in RFI for uh, potential developers to give us some ideas for how that property could be redeveloped. So I'll be working with uh, uh, with someone to draft a, a request for in, uh, interest in RFI that will go out, will solicit some input from developers, and that will help uh, the town decide how it's going to proceed with the redevelopment of that property, the, the three-acre former Navy Lodge property and the abutting town properties. Was that not included in the study that was done before? The, what's been done so far have been con conceptual um, studies and, and um, presentations. Uh, we've, we've got a couple, we had a couple of firms, uh, BHB and also the Matrix Design Group, give us some conceptual designs and um, uh, use scenarios, I guess, the mixes of uses that might be supported. Uh, but that's based it's, it's on It's taking their, it to the next step. Yeah, this is taking it to okay. the next step, getting input from real developers yeah, and, and, right. what, and, and of course those, both of that, uh, those studies are, are a few years old at this point, so getting current uh, input from developers would be useful. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rural Village District Subcommittee, Art? The, uh, we haven't gotten anything from um, either the Nunes family or Chris Beecher, but there is a, another major issue that has come up that might color this whole thing. Uh, Chris Beecher has applied for a liquor license for his oh, yeah. hotel. Right. And there was some uh, concern raised by abutters about uh, management, and also they had a picture of the Saturday afternoon situation. It has nothing to do with the Crispy Show, but what Charles does is lets people from across the street at the brewery, the vineyard, use the lot. And I'll tell you, if you go over there to buy stuff, which I do this time of year, it is really busy. It's got limos. It's very, very popular. Destination. Destination right now. So trying to sell this to the council, you're going to say it's not a rural village, it looks like New York City. So I, I don't know where it's going to go. I, I intend to speak on that issue with yeah. the council meeting, but, yeah. but it, again, yeah. the bottom line is we haven't gotten anything from the, the two principals here. Is, 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 we, is it simply a, a waiting game? or we, we, We've requested input from the two, uh, the biggest property owners, which is uh, uh, Chris Beach Show and, and, and yeah. also the Nunes family. Um, so the last we heard, I believe it was from John Nunes, he's asked for more time to go through uh, the current use table. They were asked to give us some input on what types of uses uh, the town should be considering allowing in this new district. So we're, we're waiting for some feedback from them. Would it help if uh, Art or someone on his committee worked with them? Well, we've, we've had the subcommittee meetings with them. They wanted to, some time to look at this on their own. I'll try to work something out with the planner. Oh, yeah. Get, say, fellas, we would really like to get this done before. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Thank you, Art. Okay. Um, use table subcommittee. We already talked about uh, taking on um, uh, m uh, mixed use tree commission. DJ. Well, the uh, tree commission is looking into memorial trees for the valley as well as memorial benches, and they are getting their money from a few places. Thank you. Um, open space and field. The last time you said you wanted to get off that, I think. And we, there was a question as to whether the planning board had um, a representative or whether it was just an interest that we had in that. Do we have a designated representative on open space? I, I'm, I'll, I'll have to check with the clerk on that, whether it's, whether it's a specified slot dedicated yeah. to a planning board member. 
if it is, then we need to appoint someone to that. If it's not, if no one is interested, we can just remove this from our monthly reporting. I'll check with the clerk. Thank you. Well, well, well hang on. So, so I used to be on it. Yeah. You, you asked me to step up, so. No, you, you, you said that you were so busy you could not do anything. You did ask me. To, to do open space? No, I asked you to do uh, conservation commission. No, 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 no. I'm confused. Okay, I'm confused. Straighten me out. No, you, I was on the open space, yes. and you asked me to step off so Mike could sit with Sarah. Oh, okay. So and I said fine. Open? Okay, <laughs> all right. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you Check for straightening me out. No worries. <laughs> I, apolo right, I apologize. Safe. Open space and fields. Michael. Okay, I saw some information on... Uh, Potential configurations for, uh, for uh, I guess you call them uh, uh, lacrosse fields in the area where the uh, old drive-in uh, area used to be, and uh, it looks like they're planning maybe two large fields. Now uh, they're looking at the type of uh, way the fields would be uh, designed, and uh, you know basically uh, the land is generally sloped. I mean they could flatten it out and leave it sloped. Or there's, they can level it all off and then have one drop off it down in an area where there's a wet, wetland area. Or they can step them down one field and then step it down to another field. And they've made calculations as to, you know, how much fill is required, you know, in order to meet those three different types of configurations. Uh, they have costs. Uh, from what I understand is costs, you know, uh, put together as to how much each configuration would cost. I guess the first one probably wouldn't require any fill, and the other one, some of them would require quite a lot of fill. And uh, I understand that the, the town is going to maybe be backing, the court might be in the order of like, I, about a million dollars or something like that, and I guess maybe half the cost would be there worn by the town and half by some sort of state agency. That, that was what I heard, you know, so and I haven't really attended an official meeting, but I got it from the Rosen Utilities Group. But you, you haven't gone to the meeting with that? I haven't been invited to it. You haven't been invited. Um, this, how did you get to hear the committees? Were you invited? Or? Yeah, the, um, I just showed up. <laughs> I didn't even know what, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, that was, <laughs> okay. Because when Matt left, that's what Matt told me when they were, and they are the, the third Wednesday of every month. But I, you should get in touch with um, Mason Hawes. Mason Hawes, yeah. or Nick Coogan, I believe, is yeah. also. You know what? I'll forward you his email. Okay. I'll forward you the emails tonight because I still get those emails. That'll be good. Thanks. Conservation Commission. That's Joe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm in the same boat as Mike, trying to get up to speed on that. So, uh, Ron, if you can but put th me in this touch is with. Uh, this with is a definitely yeah. a designated with Greg, yeah. rep representative on the right. Conservation Commission. Yep. So he, sh he should get a formal notification. Well, not necessarily. Um, you should probably, if you haven't communicated with Gary Paquette yet. Uh, Gary, yeah. I'm yeah. Right. Uh, you, I can get how, you his how email. How do I get in touch with him? I can get you his email. Right. If you yeah. could do that, I'll, right. I'll give you guys an update by email. Yeah. I think, with him. I think yeah. they meet, I think it's the first Monday of the month. Yeah, and, and if, you, if you write to him and tell him you're the designated planning board, right? Yeah. Or maybe, he, no, he will second, second Monday of the month. Can yeah. you give me a name and a... Uh, email or something. Yeah, uh, I will. Number in an email. Yep. that'd be great. Yep. Yeah. Is this Gary Parkett? Gary yes. Parkett. Yeah. He, he will be leaving pretty soon. I think he's moving to Wisconsin. Right. Actually, right now I understand he's been in Europe for a few weeks, so no one's gotten in touch with him. Well, hmm. as far as I know, he's still technically the chairman. Maybe that's changed, but I'll I'll find out. Yes, yeah. If yeah, you, I think yeah. you'll if find you can just point me in the right direction, I will. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, lastly, the Aquidneck Island Planning Commission, Art. Uh, on the basis of some confusion about what the Aquidneck Island Planning Commission was providing and, and uh, going along with the open meetings law requirements, um, Ron kind of said maybe you better sit out so we can opinion about it. So I said we figured that out about notification of public meeting. So the two things they're working on is a follow-up to their housing affordable housing conference I had a few months ago, and they're putting together kind of the blueprint to how to upgrade the Westside Master Plan, which was uh, done about 12 years ago. Thank you. Is there anything else to come before the board? I have a motion 
I have a motion that the Bruins win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Can I get a second? Second. I got a third. Second. Yeah, right. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye.